Would you like to see a 30 year old quick draw dog bone break, including some other slings that are 30, 20 and 10 years old? Check it out on this episode of How Not to Slut Snap. So what we got here is a sling that was purchased in 1989 to 1991, so it's about 30 years old, including this one here. And this is all from Lane Zuelke. I hope I said that right. And he's based out of Louisiana. And uh, this sling, I believe, is also in our 30-year-old pile. This was in 2003, so it's almost dateable. And this is 2010, definitely not dateable. So, and this also is, I believe, the 30-year-old rope. So very eligible to uh, slack snap. And uh, yeah, we already have 2.4 kilonewtons on our slack snap machine. Now, the reason I have a rug on here is because I don't want, th uh, things go flying when you slack snap. So we put that on there to protect it. We are using carabiners here instead of soft shackles, which is what this is because I like when this stuff goes flying, it's nice and soft. But what we do, if you haven't been to Slack Snap in a while since we've been bolt busting our guts out, is we basically have a 20 to one pulley um, multiplier here. And it's just a lot of six millimeter amp steel going back and forth, which is my original backup to my spider silk high lines. And it goes over to this fixed side with the pulleys and our Costco winch. Um, it's being double spooled, so I get a 10 to one speed. It's pretty nifty. And this is my garage. This is where uh, all the magic happens, other than the gear room that you see all the time. So uh, I just cleaned up from GGBY, and we just went through all of our bolts and stuff, and we have all these left over. And you probably have seen our Bolt Busters uh, episodes. Check those out if you haven't. They're quite interesting. Slack Snap is uh, a lot of fun. We are at sample number 730 and we're going to see what this breaks at. Now, what does a new one break at you ask? I have no idea. I just 22 think kilonewtons. 22 kilonewtons. Um, I guess I could look at the MBS on here. It does say warning proper use requires expert instructions. Well, luckily you're here at how not to highline as we will give you expert instructions on what happens when you pull it too hard. All right, so it broke where it connected with the carabiner on the tight side. It didn't actually break any of the stitching. Usually on a lot of our slackline webbing tests, we get the first bar tack is usually what breaking. The grand reveal is 23.65 kilonewtons. <laughs> After 30 years with a nylon sling, you still get full strength. And then we also have pounds of force. This was our first scale, and it's also nice to have a redundant system. 5,600 pounds of force. Sample 731 is a mammoth sling, and this is also about 30 years old. This was like that. And so it broke at the first bar tack and not at the carabiner like the previous one. Um, our carabiners are still working. 22.90 is pretty good considering how old that is. 5,350 pounds of force. And this foam did absolutely nothing. Let's show you the process of resetting this uh, so you can kind of see how the machine works. I take the tails coming out of the winch and I reset it because I want to start with as little as possible in that winch, only about three or four wraps on either side. And that way it doesn't bunch up. Now I have got a lot of resistance when I pull this and I reset that. Now, I unclip my figure eight, and yes, I use a figure eight in this system. Um, so I can pull this closer, 
reattach a sample, and then I just clip that figure eight back into place and I'm doing the same sample sizes every time. It makes it a lot easier. So I've already recorded all this. I take the sample off. I take the number and come check out our box. This is our scrap box. It's pretty neat. As much as I want to go in order of age, I'm going to go in order of like size items. So I'm going to do another dog bone. I'm going to flip this around. We install our samples. A lot of samples that we do actually take kind of uh, some creativity to get them in here because we want what we attach to them not to break. Um, and that's why we use soft shackles for a lot of things. Okay, so we tried quick links and a bunch of shit. I have these other steel carabiners that are 45 kilonewtons. I just can't put a normal carabiner in here because carabiners break at 18 to 22 kilonewtons. So um, anyways, that's in there. I'm gonna just switch this side out. Like every sample takes some finessing, right? So that's set up again. And it's very important that we have this orange rope here. Otherwise shit would go flying. Anyways, set that off to the side. Very important to hit zero on the dinos. And to protect them. And also before we attach this, we're at 732. That's a lot of slack snapping. Every sample is labeled. I'm gonna write down what this is before I break it. And I'll wear those earplugs and follow me over here. Just take that figure eight. This is just because it uh, gives me options. This amount of AM steel will allow me to basically touch those shackles together. The end of this winch does not actually see that much uh, force. It loses so much in just friction that it's just not a big deal. And before we start filming anything, I always make sure we take it to about two kilonewtons to save data and just recording time and So we're at 2.7 kilonewtons. I guess I could lock that if we want. And we film in slow motion as much as we can. So this is my Galaxy S9 and it captures uh, quite a bit. It's not very like detailed, it's like 480p, but it is 960 frames per second, which is 32 times slower than real life. So it looks actually pretty cool. So just put that there. Put this here, and let's film it. Sick. Awesome. So I watched this carabiner and the rope caught it before it smashed into anything. We'll review our sample. It broke where the carabiner was and not at the first stitch. Probably because it's so smashed in there. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. 23.50. And this, uh, this was what, 2003? Yeah. Yep, this is a 2003 dog bone at 5,500 pounds of force. It broke on the other side. That's going to be so hard to, <laughs> to undo that. But it broke where the carabiner was. Interesting. On this side. Whoa. Whoa. 25.3. And I think what's the MBS on these? 22. 20, 22. Soft goods rarely are the MBS. <laughs> and these are old as hell. 5,900 pounds of force. So this rope is from 1991. It was used for one season. I tied my figure eights uh, as good as I could. We've already got 1.6 kilonewtons on 
our rope here. And uh, it, since this is the tail that is not tensioned, it's already starting to deform the knot. People talk about dressing your knots, but what they don't really mention is that once certain tensions are achieved, it actually undresses your knots. What uh, we, we're gonna focus on on this test is how much this rope stretches. I have to make sure that this catcher is super long because this rope's going to stretch probably double is what I have experienced in the past. So we're gonna do this one a little bit more zoomed out. We are going to watch how much that stretches. This is already at 1.6. This was tied as tightly to this one as I could. There was only about this much space when I had it tied. So now it's already gone to there. So let's let it rip. And I was curious if this was dynamic or not. <laughs> Whoa, only 14.15. It's half as strong as the, as the quick draws. That's crazy. Um, well, feel how, feel how warm this is. Wow, that's hot. Yeah, 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 well, this knot is all sorts of jacked up. Now, of course, this was wrapped around this way and it broke inside the knot. This side is the side uh, that didn't break. You can see this is what came out of the knot there from that side, but this side you can see kind of how deformed this figure eight looks. Pretty hard to keep those things dressed nicely if you're gonna put this much force on it. But I mean, that thing stretched more than double probably, right? Yeah. And look how much we double spooled this thing. Uh, it went to the center and started to work its way and started to work its way back over here. This is an REI double length sling with no MBS from 1989 to 1991. We're gonna do this a wide angle because it's going to probably Stretch a bit. And what happened? Ho holy shit. Uh, stretchy long samples. What? <laughs> okay. So that happened. I guess where the carabiner was, I assume. Yeah. It's all a little wrinkly now. Ah, I bet you it's not rated for 26, but we got 26.65. And... 6,200. 6,200. Damn, dude. <laughs> uh. And here's our final test. This is a rope that Bobby had that is about 20 years old and was used for three years as a dog run rope. So left outside continuously for three years. And we're gonna find out uh, how strong this is right now. see here that it broke in this knot. This was had a parallel line. It was probably going through there. Oh, that is super stiff. Whoa, only 11.9. Pretty stiff. Pretty warm. Kind of smelly. You can see kind of how the knot gets all jacked. But uh, yeah. It's, um, uh, I, I guess I would whip on it. Would you whip on your rope? I would whip on that. 